Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at Newton's law of universal gravitation. So let's get started. So we've got another one of Newton's laws here in addition to Newton's three laws of motion. And it says that Sir Isaac Newton found that every object in the universe with a mass attracts every other object with a mass. This is known as Newton's law of universal gravitation. And it basically describes the gravitational force of attraction between two objects. So we say that the gravitational force of attraction between any two objects is given by this equation here. So it's F equals G times M1 M2 over R squared, where F is the gravitational force of attraction measured in Newtons, G is the universal constant of gravitation measured in meters cubed per kilogram per second squared, M1 is the mass of object 1 measured in kilograms, M2 is the mass of object 2 measured in kilograms, and R is the distance between the center of masses measured in meters. The universal constant of gravitation is found on the data sheet in your exam and it's given a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. So you get this equation on the relationship sheet in the exam and it says here that this law is an inverse square law which means that the gravitational force of attraction between two objects varies inversely with the square of the distance between them. In other words, as the distance between two objects doubles, the force of attraction between them quarters. So just to help you visualize this, I'm going to show you an animation. So here we've got two masses, M1 and M2, both at 200 kilograms. So you see the center of mass of this one is at zero meters, and the center of mass of this one is at two meters. So initially they're two meters apart, and you'll see the forces of each object there. So you've got force on mass M1 by mass M2, and the force on mass M2 by mass M1. So right now we've got a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons for both gravitational forces. And we should see that if we double this distance from 2 meters to 4 meters, then by the inverse square law, we should expect that the force values here will quarter because we're doubling the distance. And that's because F, the gravitational force of attraction here, is proportional to 1 over the distance squared, 1 over r squared. So if we double this distance from 2 meters to 4 meters, you should see that we've quartered the value of force there, going from 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 to a value of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. And you can check by dividing the first value by 4 that we get this value. If we were to then double that again from 4 meters to 8 meters, then we should expect this to quarter again by the inverse square law. So if I increase the distance from 4 to 8 meters, then we get 4.17 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. Again, you can check by dividing the first number by 4 that we get this value. Now because our gravitational force of attraction is directly proportional to the masses, then if we were to increase either mass value here or both mass values, then we should find again that the force values will increase. So if I increase mass M1, you'll see that the gravitational force of attraction has increased. If I increase mass M2, again we get a larger value for the force. So remember, the bigger mass is the bigger the force, but the bigger the distance between the two masses, the smaller the force. And it's an inverse square law. Going back to the notes, we just have one last thing to look at, and it says that gravitation is a mutual force between two objects. This means that object 1 will exert a force on object 2 that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force exerted by object 2 on object 1. And we've just seen that in our animation. So you can see from the picture here we've got two different masses M1 and M2 separated by a distance r and we've got the force F1 acting this way and the force F2 acting this way. So force F1 will act on mass M2 due to M1 and force F2 will act on M1 due to M2. And the last important thing it says down here is to note that R is the distance from the center of mass of one object to the center of mass of the other. So that's going from this point to this point. And therefore you need to take that into account when you're stating your values of distance when doing questions relating to this topic. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.